hopefully, uh, hopefully I look all right. Because that's all that matters, right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, this is Johnny Bean, live, uh, 5.01 p.m. Pacific, 8.01 Eastern Time, June 2nd, 2017, second day of June. Where's the guy that's been sleeping? I, I think he should be awake by now. <laughs> Adam, Adam Scheinberg. Hey, man, where can I get my 5150 special edition? Oh, I think this is the month, man. Uh, hey, everybody. John Constantine, Mr. BHB. Is that Bruce? Is that Bruce? Ty Z, John Windsor, a lot of people in here. Look at this. Bill Comporis. Hey, man. Bill, did I just add you on Facebook? Uh, yes, you are, Bruce. Bruce? Hey, everybody. Welcome. It's Friday. We call this Fender Friday. Um, I don't know. 5150 Friday. 5150 Friday. Yeah, freaking Friday. That's right, Showman Blues. Hey, man. So, hey, who's in here? Hey, Dave Nesdall. Hey, man. Dave. My buddy Jack from Rock and Roll Amps here on Long Island. Hey, there. Custom, uh, custom boutique amp company. Awesome. Nice to meet you, man. Same here. Yeah, I've heard a lot about you, actually. I've seen, uh, I've seen a lot of videos um, of, your, of your stuff, your, uh, your amplifier. Is that like, like shows, like guitar shows and stuff? Yeah, yeah. I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Heard a lot of great stuff. Great things about your your amplifiers. Thank you. Yes. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's Friday. <laughs> yeah. So Jack just uh, um, basically rewired my uh, my green Wolfgang sustainer guitar to to make the sustainer work. Uh, it was a mess. There were there were a lot of things that weren't correct about it. Luckily, we had another guitar, uh, Pete, Amen to that. Pete's guitar, you know, um, Pete Carooch. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he just got his sustainer guitar back from Fernandez, that, uh, and I brought it here, and we looked at that one, and Jack fixed mine. I just mine. copied it. And it works great. It's quiet, works great. Uh-huh. And, uh, and it's clean, soldered clean, perfect. Very cool. So that was that's the green Wolfgang that you got, the one you got from Guitar Center when you unboxed yeah. it. The battery fell out the back. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's that. Okay. Yeah. So now we know why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was fun. <clears throat> so inside that compartment, uh, I guess that sustainer pickup was put in in 2007, because in in the uh, rear cavity compartment where the sustainer uh, PC board is. Underneath that is where it was routed out for it, and it said the guy's name and 2007 on it. So I think that's when it was put in. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. It's definitely an odd setup. You know, I don't know. Yeah. It's you know, there's uh, a lot of wiring that uh, really shouldn't go to the PCB board when they could have just manufactured it so that like two or three wires can go in a certain place rather than having two wires on the bottom and then having to finesse a little tiny wire onto the tip of a, a solder pad. You know, it's a little bit odd, mm -hmm. but it works great. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Very <laughs> cool. so, yeah. So what's going on in the, uh, in the chat room? Do we have anyone uh, asking anything? Uh, you guys got to excuse me. The computer's farther away than normal, so it's tougher to see. Everyone's saying hello to each other. Yeah, yeah. Pris, uh, fixed. They are fixed, but you know, <laughs> I can see better with uh, maybe. I don't know. These double glasses. I'll stand there. over here, okay? Oh, and you can bring the no, computer closer. Let's do this. Just a little bit. <laughs> Pop bottle glasses. Now, now. <laughs> if Desiree had only only known. Pris forty six. Hey. Everybody. Thank you for uh jumping in. Yes. So it's Friday. I hope everybody's having a great Friday. Ty mm -hmm. Z. Any eggs today? Yeah. I'm I'm a chicken farmer. Um I, I got uh I don't know, seven? Seven, seven eggs? Not that bad. Any bigger than the others? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they all the chickens they, they all lay their own eggs and they're all different shapes and sizes and colors and 
Wow, that's cool. All that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. I hope everybody had a great day today. Mm-hmm. Um, I know you. You guys just had dinner. Yes. Um, yep. Janice S says hello, everyone. Janice, are you the, are you a first time watcher today? That could be Genesee. Possibly. Hmm. Could be first time watcher or first time. Blaster comment. Kid also. Blaster Kid, I, I haven't seen you either. Hi. Hey. Thank you, Joe Wentz. Nice Wolfgang, he says. Yeah, right there. Awesome. Blaster Kid two, 2014 says he's uh, prepping Taco Friday. Awesome. Blaster Kid, yeah. I, I had tacos last night. You mm-hmm. guys, if you guys jump over to my Instagram, which is just my name, Johnny Bean, uh, you'll see uh, some what what we called uh, backwards tacos. It's basically uh, it was the taco shells. My wife made these and just handed them to me. They're like taco shells, and the on the outside of the taco shells, they were lying down flat. On the outside was the the beans, the the tomatoes, and a little bit of cheese, and the inside was like melted cheese with jalapenos. So I think they're more like tostadas. Is that it? You would know more than I do. I think. They were good, though. They're either on my Instagram or they're on Howie's Instagram, my dog, which is Howie Bean. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway. So what do you Tost- got, Johnny? Tostadas. Yeah, Bill says tostadas. That's what they are. That's what they are. Although I called them backward. I, I, I called them hashtag backwards tacos. And Instagram warned me about using that hashtag. <laughs> They said, uh, we're not showing the results of, of, of your tacos because it could be uh, inappropriate. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, it two blues. Hey, man. How are you doing? Everybody. Oh, look at this. Got lots of comments coming from everywhere here. Vinny is here. Our Vinny. Hey, man. Uh, let's see. So, yes. What? I don't know. All right. So anyway, Jack Jack makes these amplifiers, and uh, uh, they're hand wired. You can get them in different wattages, basically any wattages. He makes his his two major amplifiers are called the Reverb Deluxe and the Little Bastard L I L Little Bastard. Those are the two main amplifiers. He does make other ones, and he's making this really cool little amplifier now that's called the blues senior senior you know fender makes a blues junior amp mm-hmm. a small 112 you know sounds 15 okay watts. 15 watts not mm-hmm. a lot of clean headroom well jack takes that chat that uh, that box mm-hmm. and uh m- and makes this amplifier i completely with got it got it out we i reused the box the chassis and the speaker, if the customer wants the speaker, and make it into a um, a very very clean thirty or forty watt, either four six V six or four EL eighty four amp, and it's just very simple: volume, treble, middle, bass. It's a platform for uh, pedal boards, easy to you know transport, thirty five to forty pounds depending upon the speaker, and it's very cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's excellent, and it's in that little box, so it's you know, again, you know, lightweight, perfect for any you know New York City kind of gig or any city gig where you know you carry your pedal board on uh, in one hand, your amp in the other hand, and your guitar on your back. Excellent little amplifier. Is this fellow asking me this question? Uh, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Kevin Tweedy says, uh, "What's the?" Cheapest cost you think you can make a tube amp? Well, to build a reasonably good tube amp, um, you, the parts, for sure, 800 plus. That doesn't include any labor. If you're just building one amp, or even if you're building 10, there's not really a big reduction in the price of parts. You'd have to be building hundreds before you could save any money. But uh, probably between $800 and $850. Combos could be up to $900, just in parts. 
Kevin, what you have to remember is, you know, with a, with a small company where it's just a custom build, uh, hand wired amplifiers are going to be more money because it's more ha it's more hands on thing. It's not nothing's really getting done by machine. Uh, there's not a you know uh, uh, with bigger companies, um, say someone makes a hundred units, you're going to get parts a lot less expensive than if someone is building them one at a time. So. But that's uh, that's still pretty inexpensive for for you know uh, uh, a custom amp builder, which is pretty amazing. And then again, I mean it's a it's a tough question to answer because there's so many different amplifiers. If you're talking about a single-ended five-watt champ kind of amplifier, well, yeah, it's going to cost less. But if you're going to build something with uh, some power, clean headroom, uh, reliable, blah 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 lack of hum yeah like I said before it's a good uh, eight to nine hundred dollars in parts mm -hmm. yeah Kevin says interesting tubes are expensive uh, or the time question mark uh, if I wired it myself what could I do it for well that's what I'm saying it's gonna cost you yeah. about eight hundred dollars that's parts. just in parts that's not you know that's that's just the cost of parts and, and if you want, just let me throw this in that uh, I mean you can go to Mojo right can I say that sure okay. you can mention any uh, company Mojo I think it's Mojo Tone go to their website they're good people I sometimes buy from them and they have great kits and you see when you add that stuff all up you know a kit can be six seven eight hundred dollars <throat> so mm -hmm. depending upon again wattage speaker size blah 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 mm -hmm. cabinet size Mm -hmm. Cool. Hope that answered your question. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's another Kevin in here. Somebody I'm asked a question about your Les Paul. Back up. You're Mr. Dave, right? Yeah. Okay. There you go. Yes, Joe Wentz. It's my friend Joe. It's my friend Joe. Yes, it is. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Uh, yes, Jaden James. Jaden James, one hundred four. Yes, Mr. yes. Rock and roll amps. <laughs> For those of you who uh, who are coming in a little late, this is my friend Jack. Hi again. Jack uh, owns Rock and Roll Amps. Uh, he's also the builder. The you know he's the guy. He's the guy behind it. He also does amazing repair work. Uh, anyone who wants to get something repaired usually uh, if he has parts in stock and it's not you know if it doesn't take too much time he could Hi, actually Chris. he could actually do it in front of you while you wait or send you to lunch you know you can go have your lunch and by the time you come back it might be done if he doesn't have parts in stock he gets things done right away and everything is always perfect when you get it so if you need anything repaired um, tube amp wise that is uh, and maybe even some pedals and he does guitar uh, um, guitar work as well he, he does uh, repairs on guitars Adam I'm in North Babylon hmm so, so you fix pedals as well uh, a minimum you know I don't really get heavy into troubleshooting um, you know the circuit board too time consuming and most pedals don't have any value you know so when you start adding in um, what I require to do the repair I have to be very careful as soon as I open the pedal if I see that it's going to be going somewhere I tell the customer you know what this pedal is only worth like 75 bucks you want to spend 150 fixing it I mean if it means something to you then yeah okay let's do it but mm -hmm. tell them in advance it's not worth it but um, if it's something like, you know, input jack, uh, the switches or wire broke loops, potentiometer, broken shaft, battery clips are falling off, you know, blah, 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 all that stuff. Those are relatively easy fixes, and it, it pays to do it, especially if you like the pedal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I've got this old uh, Boss uh, Metal Zone that I uh, dropped. It's too bad. <laughs> they did some <laughs> 
No, seriously, I've got some some M old MXR pedals that uh, I step on them and they just you know scream uncontrollably. Um. <laughs> if you put your fingers on the fretboard of the guitar, that might stop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Very cool. And hey, Kevin, Kevin Landorf, are you still in here? Man, I got your message, um, but it was super late at night, so I haven't written you back yet. But uh, if you, you want, you. send me a message. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Cool. That's awesome, though. That, that's that's very cool. Yeah, Dave. He, he talks about you all the time. Um, talks cool, about your yeah. your, uh, your your amps and and uh, a lot of times on these things, I think he's playing through one of your amps as well. Very well could be. What do you say to that? What he said that sometimes when you're doing your show, I does right. noodling through the amps. I do. Yes, I noodle through the RR100 mostly because I don't have to use my pedal board. Yes, the the hundred watt plexi uh, with with gain that is just amazing. Actually, it's it's more than that. Actually, the clean the clean channel on my app is more of a dumble type of clean, and the uh, the, um, the overdrive, overdrive is, sound is more of a Marshall, but a really high gain Marshall, which is but it sounds great. Tricked out Marshall. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what's what's your website? It's www.rockandrollamps.com, R-O-C-K-N-R-O-L-L-A-M-P-S.com. Cool. Very cool. Hey, you guys. People are jump, jumping in here, and they're, they're saying hello. Um, yeah, usually when we do these things, there's people jump in. We have regulars, um, a lot of regulars that, that talk to us in the chat room. and. Um, ask questions and you know it's basically it's it's like it's like we're just hanging out mm -hmm. you know yeah. ha having a good time or at least trying hey, real real quick while while i have this in my head please uh on behalf of johnny and 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 us and all of us uh we really want we want to wish joe wentz's dad a speedy recovery we know that uh that he's going to have some surgery on monday uh, and uh, we hope that it goes quick for him, and and he has a very speedy recovery. And we're thinking about him, Joe Wentz. Give Amen. your dad our best, please. Amen. Yes. Uh, yeah. All, all, all our best. Really, you have regulars? Adam says, "Yeah, you, Adam Scheinberg, you're you're our regular." <laughs> regular what? He's you know I know Adam Scheinberg just a little bit better than you, and he's not very regular. Oh, <laughs> well, you took him to Moe's, right? <laughs> what? You took him to Moe's? No, uh, we went to Chipotle, and I think he took me. To tell you the truth. Oh. oh. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Adam is a uh, Long Islander. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good guy. Mm hmm. Yeah. Somebody, somebody in the chat earlier was saying strong, strong island. Something like that. It can be. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I I've only been to New York once, and that was like twenty something, twenty something years ago. Um, hope to make it back at some point because I, I had a, a great time. Great time over there. Uh, well, if you come back, you have a place to stay. It's just not at my house. <laughs> <laughs> Notice, who writes your stuff? Uh, <laughs> uh, you, you ever been to California? Who, me? Mm -hmm. I do. Uh, once. Once or twice? Twice. You think I remember where? I, oh, I went to Disneyland, right? Disneyland is California. Disney yeah. World is Florida, correct? Yeah. yeah. And visit yeah. some, uh, you know, relatives. Cool. Yeah, Disneyland. That's in Anaheim, which is right across the street from the Anaheim Convention Center, where they hold the the, the Winter Nam show every year. So you could say you went to Nam. You could say. Never had the pleasure. It's uh, it's out of my price league. <laughs> 
It's pretty. It's, it's a very cool thing, but you got to have deep pockets to go. Mm -hmm. Or to, to be to 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 exhibit. Well, look at it this way. You know, you got to take off probably. First of all, you have to have merchandise to show. All right. And so get it there. You got to pay to have it brought there. You got to have a hotel room to stay. You got to bring a couple of friends. You know, you got to pay for their transportation. It, it, when you think about it, it's a pretty, pretty expensive undertaking. You got to have uh, good boxing for all of your amplifiers. Everything's got to be packed up. We're in flight cases. So mm -hmm. uh, you think about it. Plus, the cost of the NAM show itself isn't really that much. But uh, when you add in all the other peripheral stuff, it, it becomes pretty expensive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, what about uh, what about summer now? That's that's a bit closer. It's still it's it's still terrible to to yeah. ship everything down mm -hmm. to Nashville from here. Mm -hmm. It's it's it doesn't matter where you're shipping it. It's the, the fact that you have to ship it, and the drive is it's like like a twenty hour drive from here to there. Mm -hmm. It's thousands of dollars. I just I, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, hey, local shows. Uh huh. Yeah. Speaking of that, isn't there some big guitar show this weekend? Uh yeah, the, I think In, uh, the, the music zoo is is uh, running it. Uh, I think at the music zoo. I'm not sure what what yeah, it probably. entails. I I saw something earlier. Some oh, huge. Yeah, I think it's uh, called the Gold, Gold Coast Guitar Guitar Show or something. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. I saw that. It looked cool. Hey, uh, where is it? Steve Anderson. Hey, man. You're awake. Dude, it's June. How's your guitar? <laughs> For months, this guy, Steve, he's been, he's, he's like, you know, can't wait till June. Getting a new guitar. Can't wait till June. Now it's June. And it's not here yet. <laughs> I think he's got like uh, at least fifteen more sleeps before it gets to him. <laughs> uh -huh. What you get? The, the EVH fifty one fifty guitar. It's uh, yet yeah. another alt guitar. This that, thing. Right this there. guitar. This guitar right here. He's yeah, he, that was at the name show. This mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Speaking of speaking of that guitar, are are you uh, are are you into into Van Halen? Van Halen guitars, his gear, all that stuff? Uh, no, I'm into Van Halen. I mean, I love Van Halen. I think he's amazing. But uh, as far as the gear and stuff, it's not my thing. Mm -hmm. Jack is more of a Jeff Beck guy. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the big three from the 70s, Jeff Beck, Jimmy Page, and Eric Clapton. I spent a lot of time studying Jeff Beck's technique. And I'm not going to tell you that I could play as good as him, but I... I got it. He sound, if you bad. if you close your eyes, he sounds just like Jeff Beck. Don't don't let him fool you. Yeah, nice. quite the guitar player. Thank you, Dave. You're welcome. <laughs> awesome. But it's the truth. Absolutely the truth. Jack is you know one of the better guitar players on on Long Island, which in my opinion makes him a great amp builder because he's got a great set of ears and he knows what he wants to hear out of an amplifier. A lot of people really don't. Oh yeah, yeah. I know there's a lot of builders of, of instruments that don't even play. You know, don't even play guitar or, or whatever. So I think somebody who does play, and somebody that that can play well, I think anything. Uh, if they build, I, I think I think the stuff is a uh, would be pretty good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. John Constantine, Jeff Beck is amazing, and let me tell you. He is one master of manipulating that strat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> RMG, yeah. Yeah, you can ask us a question. Go ahead. Well, since when does that stop you anyway? <laughs> Type faster. That's okay. <laughs> While we're waiting. <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah. I love Jeff Beck. He's great. Uh, Clapton's great. All those guys. I'm. I I listen to a lot of lot of different people. Um, a lot of different stuff. But with these with these live videos that we do, we really 
a lot of it does focus on on the Edward Van Halen, uh, on on his his gear, his his brand, um, right? A lot of that stuff because we're we're huge huge fans of the stuff. Hello, so. Desiree. Hey, Desiree. I'm a huge fan of listening and mm -hmm. watching him. Mm -hmm. I mean, the guy's just got this stuff so down pat already. It's like second nature. Yeah. Seems like he doesn't even have to think about it. It just pulls off his fingers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Nesdal, mm, no. Okay. <laughs> He's sending me texts. Uh, cause I, can you confirm that? Um, you oh, you, only, no. only that I read oh, it. Well, don't say what you're, well, you're you, trying you know, to No, you read it too. Well, no, I didn't. I didn't read it. Oh, I didn't, but, uh, <laughs> I can confirm that my shark guitar will be here on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. What's a shark guitar? I'll say, I'll show you a photo of it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty wild yeah yeah the the finished product painted will look like that wow is that a van halen thing too it is that's one of the guitars that he uh started using like he used that in the very beginning for the first three tours. Yep. Okay, All here's right. the question. Have you been on the modeling and digital sense? I like my katana. It's mid game to high game Marshall. Which two map would you recommend? That's a pretty broad question. You gotta be more specific about your your likes and your needs. Hmm. I gotta read it again. Uh, last tube amp was ten years ago. Mesa Boogie Roadster. That's a big amp right there. Uh, I've been on a modeling or digital since then. Like my Katana, it's a mid gain to high gain Marshall. Which tube amp would you recommend? Well, RMG, do you still want um, do you still want a high gain amp, or do you want something that you can you know have a great platform for pedals, which is going to be a clean sounding amp? That lets the pedals do the work. Right. And Desiree, yeah, we could probably visit the guitar on Thursday when you come because uh, it's not going to be at the house. It's going to be getting painted. Who's the guest? Oh, Jimmy Carr. This is Jack. Jack from Rock and Roll Hi, Amps. Jimmy. You know, uh, you know the, all those amplifiers that you see in my living room? That's Jack's amps. Those are Jack's amps. He builds them. <laughs> I mean, as far as a high gain amp, I mean, why don't you get a Friedman? Who wants to spend that much money on an amp? Oh, well, you can always get a used <laughs> one. Used is going to be $2,800. Don't you have one downstairs? Don't you have a high gain and one more, like an offender? Oh, yeah. You know what? I do have one more downstairs. I have two, but they're both different. Mm-hmm. Hey, Jimmy. Uh, let's see. Uh, RMG, uh, if you, you know what, maybe maybe you might want to um, private message me and we can talk amps. Oh, uh, you don't own a single pedal. You'd like the amp to do the work. Does Jack make something? I mean, yes, he does make something you may like. Um I have I have the one that I use at my house is exactly what you'd be looking for, um, and he I believe Jack has one or two already built. And if he doesn't have something exactly that you want, uh, you might be able to get him to build it. He might have something close already. So um, I'll text since I have your information. I'll text you Jack's number, and you guys can can talk about it. Right, don't mind me. I'm scratching my dog's head. <laughs> in case you're wondering what I'm doing. Ah. 
<laughs> I'm not touching myself. I'm scratching. Okay. My <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, uh, hey, Kevin Landorf. Hey, man. Yeah. Kevin. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for the uh, the post the other day. Our friend uh, Kevin. He. Uh, <laughs> Sent a sent a, a cool picture the other day. Very funny, Bill. <laughs> yeah, Bill, you're you're a laugh a minute. <laughs> Let me find you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my goodness, boy, that's twice. Jimmy Car, hey Jimmy. <laughs> cool, cool. So hey, so what what uh, what kind of guitars? I assume you own guitars. Oh yeah. <laughs> what, what what kind of guitars do you have? What kind of stuff do you like well, to play? Well, I have a 1995 uh, American Strat that I converted over years ago to a Jeff Beck Strat. Mm -hmm. And um, okay, I got a custom-made Telecaster style guitar, which I called my old man Telecaster. You know, it's got a tummy cut, forearm cut. Uh, I reversed the, uh, you know, the Control. switch in the controls and have the volume control and the tone closer to the pickups. Anyway, it's uh, seafoam green, beautiful, beautiful, well-made. Uh, what else? I have a Les Paul 2013, which uh, right off the rack, I just went like this. I'll take it. It was amazing. The only thing I did to it was uh, rewire. I gutted it because I didn't want that PCB board inside. Wired it like a 59. Pickups are great right off the – never changed them. And what else? Oh, and I have a Fitzgerald Stratocaster, which was custom-made for me as a gift when I got married from my wife. It's a great – it's like a 65 Stratocaster. Yes. And Fitzgerald is, is our friend Larry Fitzgerald who uh, does all the fret work to my guitars. He's the master. He's great, great guitar builder. Mm -hmm. He's the master. I could have bought my guitar anywhere, but I had him build it. Mm. <clears throat> that's cool. So anyway, that's it. I got four guitars. That's all I need. Mm -hmm. It's like a little bit of each. The big three. Strat, Telly, Les Paul. That's all you need. Well, that's all he needs. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I forgot who I'm sitting with. <laughs> all I need. I just need one more. That's uh. all. Just kidding. Steve Anderson, I, I'm glad to hear your 84 Floyd fits in your circles guitar. Awesome. Uh, what else do we have here? Um, yes, been, Bruce. Bruce, Jack is, has some impressive guitars. Yes, he's an impressive guitar player. It, Larry Fitzgerald is a great football player, but not the same guy. Yeah, this guy's kind of scrawny, white, you know, little guy. But he he makes a great guitar. Mm -hmm. And he's a good guitar player. Yeah, he is. He is a good guitar player. Well, you would have to be a good guitar player to make a good guitar. No, you, you don't. No, you really do. That's what I was saying earlier, though. There are people that don't even play. Right, but uh, do they make a good guitar? I've heard I've heard of people that, that they're great. Um, like they, they do something great, but you hand it back to them and, and they can barely do anything with it. Oh, Show Showman Blues. blues. Uh, the Telly has a tummy cut. It has a forearm cut and it has a bevel. I'm not really sure what part of the guitar, where the neck enters the body pocket. If you were to be looking like down the neck, normally you'd see a rectangle where the screws go through. Well, this is more of a bevel cut. So that when you reach your arm, your hand around the neck, you actually have more fingers sticking out because the palm side is the normal thickness and the finger side is thinner. It's a very interesting thing. I think I got the body from Warmoth. It's a feature that they offer. And um, what else? Oh, and an inch and three quarter nut because I got big fat fingers. Yeah, it's a really wide, wide fretboard. 
Well, actually, the rest of the fretboard is the same as any other fretboard. At, the, just at the nut, at it's, the a nut, at the nut it's a little wide, yeah. But it's a pleasure to play because now when I strum a chord, I don't have to do a dance around to try to get my fingers to not interfere with any of the open strings. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you a question. And it's going to sound stupid, but a neck <laughs> that's one and three quarters <laughs> at the nut and say you have another one that's one and seven eighths at the nut. Yeah. Is that the same size or is that no? It's seven eighths of an inch bigger. bigger. Yeah. Believe it or not, that eighth of an inch um, makes a big difference in comfort. It takes time to get used to because we're all used to inch and five eighth, inch and eleven sixteenths, mm -hmm. inch and three quarter. But hey, listen, people play uh, acoustic guitars that are much wider. They're like two inches. <laughs> I think Dave is just used to an inch. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Steve, Steve Anderson, how many eggs did I get today? Seven, I think. <laughs> See, I told you, we have a lot of fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. Usually at my expense. It's okay. It's all good. Oh. Pete is here. That's for my pleasure anyway. It's not for anyone else's. <laughs> oh, Pete's in the house. Ah, uh, yes. Pete who? Kirk oh, Pete, Kirk look. Kirk. Pete, you're here. My uh, thank you ver very much for lending me your uh, your sustainer guitar, Pete. Pete's, uh, oh, Pete's guitar. Pete. Yeah, yeah, Pete lent me his... Uh, his uh, black and white striped PV Wolfgang with the sustainer pickup in it so that I can get mine fixed today. And it's, it worked out perfectly. So uh, it's all good. Pete, by the way, this is Jack from Rock and Roll Amps. Hey, Pete. Mm -hmm. Nice paint job on your, on your guitar, by the way. Yeah, it really is nice, isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Showman Blues. Yeah. I've got I've got uh chickens and they lay eggs every day. So I have to go out and co collect them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and people ask me how many eggs I got today. There's a guy that watches us that keeps a journal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Brian you. Davies, no, I did not get a new guitar. This uh, the the guitar that that just got repaired is is one I've had for a little bit. Uh, but now the sustainer pickup actually works. Mm -hmm. So, so it so it wasn't working before. No, it was wired incorrectly. Uh, there were a couple wires that were that weren't on the right terminals, and it was close. But you know, close doesn't get you anywhere. Thanks for that comment, Pete. And by the way, it was a real trip fixing the guitar because Pete's guitar had, a, let's say, a white wire running through the body. And then it was attached to a red wire. Dave's guitar, that same wire, was like a purple wire. And then it was attached to a brown wire, you know, just lengthening, you know, because the, the wires were too short. And it was like, ay, 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 yeah. trying to figure out where this one's blue. This it's, is green, it's very it's funny. Red. It's yeah. like unbelievable. Our friends at, at Fernandez really uh, on the ball with their color coordination. Very strange wiring. How did I start building amps? Uh, about, I don't know, 16, 17 years ago, I bought a Fender Bassman that was uh, a mess. It was a blackface, and I figured, what's the worst that could happen? I'll destroy it, and then I'll have to get somebody who really knows what he's doing to fix it. But it was a cheap investment at the time. I think they were about 200 bucks. And I uh, did a lot of studying, bought a lot of books, uh, took a few courses, and uh, it was just a lot of cramming. I treated it as if it was college level. You know, that's the kind of time I put in it. And I did it day and night. And it just happened. It just came together. Mm -hmm. And I say, it's a, it was a love that came together. Mm -hmm. So, so when, you're, when you're working on amps or, or fixing gear for somebody, uh, I'm guessing you're, you're having a great time doing it. Uh, you might say that. <laughs> Unless it's Dave's stuff. You're just swearing. <laughs> Thank you, Desiree. But you know what? I'm not 
trying to make this about me, but I spent most of my life either doing physical labor in the heat, in the summer, in the cold, in the winter. Now I wake up in the morning and make a pot of coffee, go downstairs and work on an amp. It's air conditioned in the summer and it's heated in the winter. And this is about you, by the way. You're the guest. Oh, okay. You're the guest. <laughs> it's all about you, so shut up. <laughs> yeah, usually Dave thinks it's all about him. So That's because it is. <laughs> well, because your head is, takes up the whole screen when the computer You're right. Closer. It does. It absolutely does. I'm trying to get it smaller, but it just I got a clamp downstairs. That was <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's head is bigger than Dennis's, so I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Oh. B. Jr. That's Bruce. What is, who's that, Bruce? Is That's that Bruce? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, I think you, you get Dave and you get him into that clamp, I think uh, we'll be heading into the wrong wrong part of YouTube quick, you know? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh Just reading. A lot of people, yeah, they, they talk. People ask us questions. They talk to themselves. Um, hey, those are the people we got to worry about, those that talk <laughs> to themselves. Yeah, and actually, remember, if you guys, if you have a question for one of us, type our name out, and that way it'll highlight, and we'll be able to see it. You can either type out Johnny Bean. If you want to talk to me, you can talk. You can type Dave Nesdahl, um, and uh, we'll be able to see your, your questions a little easier. That way, Bozik has a question yeah, Bozik. Actually, the Roland, some of the Roland products are pretty cool. Even the old uh, Roland uh, 212. Oh, what the JC120. The JC120. Yeah, yeah. And also, uh, I repaired a Roland Cube the other day. That was like not bad. Oh, you have a Cube, right, Johnny? Roland mm -hmm. Cube app. Those one are of the one of the newer, the newer things. Yeah, Cube. Uh... Thank you, Greg. Yeah, yeah, they're great. They're they're very very cool. Um, uh, Bill Comporis, the unfinished Wolfgang, is over there. It's in the rack. I've been I've been playing this one lately, a lot. I kind of like this one better. Um, what was I going to say? Um, yeah. Anyway, so, thank you, thank you everybody for looking for watching. We got fifty three people looking at us. Uh, Eighteen thumbs ups. We appreciate the thumbs ups. They really do help. Um, Showman Blues. I've seen a few of his videos. They're cool, and some of my amps do have reverb. Yeah, RMG. Yeah, so some of the amps do have reverb. Um, Dave Nisdol, Jack. Can we get a better look at your shirt? Was that me? Yeah. He wants to see your shirt. Life is good. And it's worn out. You could tell this thing has been around the block, but I love it. <laughs> That's when, when we first jumped on here, when I was watching Dave eat the Chinese food, I had mentioned you're wearing the Life is Good shirt because I, I have one of those shirts as well, a different one. Yeah. Um, hey. Uh, yes, Jim, Go ahead. Uh, sorry? Oh, our friend Jim uh, Nicholas just sent me a... Uh, a message. He says, uh, hey now, Dave, what pickup is in your shark guitar? DeMarzio's question mark? No, it's a it's a pariah pickup. Uh I believe Sean Christopher from Pariah Pickups. Uh he made it and it's I you know what? I don't know the actual name of it, but it's the same one that he's that that the, he's been putting in all of those shark reissues that he that uh Donnie Ward's been making. Um if you guys know Devin Hull, it's the same one that's in his guitar. Um, if you give me till uh, – what is today, Friday? If you give me till Monday till our next show, I'll find out the pickup, and I'll let you know exactly what it is. But I don't have that information at the moment. Steve Anderson says, Dave Nesdahl, uh, you showed a new neck on your Kramer ad guitar, I believe, the other day. Uh, how would you describe the back shape of the neck? Uh, I seem to like my Charvel Sam Demas C-shaped necks the best. Well, when I ordered it from Musicraft, I ordered it with the uh, with the uh, the it's got the Wolfgang, the um, the EVH asymmetrical Wolfgang shape, so it's going to feel like a new Wolfgang. Uh, that's that's the shape of it. 
uh, kind of like a, a mid-sized C shape. Not very thin. Can I answer this question? Sure, go ahead. Um, I'm sorry if I pronounce it wrong. Uh, what did you do? Oh, black eye. Uh, bla black EDH. Black, black EDH. EDH. Okay. Uh, yes, Glassman makes amazing tube amps. Um, mostly Dumble style, uh, but I've seen them, been in them, heard them, and thumbs up for that. That's another thing. Jack also makes Dumble clones. Um, so if you're into the Dumble thing and want a Dumble amp, talk to Jack. He's he he makes them, and he, uh, he may actually have one or two laying around. So I also modify a lot of uh, what happened, Dave. I lost oh. it. Okay, you lost it. Yep. Okay. Um, I do a lot of modifications to like the Syriatone, um, what's it called, the Lunchbox, and a bunch of the other Syriatone amplifiers that are all Dumble style. Lunchbox. Oh, look at that. That's me? That's yeah. what I look like? Yeah, that's what you oh, Cool. Yeah, a lot, a lot of the stuff you guys are talking about, it's all new to me. I, I'm not, I, I, I'm not really aware of a lot of the, a lot of this, this, a lot of that gear. But see, even even I learn stuff. I there's think this. I, I might be misunderstanding something. Glassman. I thought Glassworks. I'm sorry. The name of the amp that I'm familiar with is Glassworks. So. Sorry, I misunderstood. It's not Glassman. I really don't know anything about Glassman. Mm -hmm. Blank Palette says he likes the wide necks, the, the, the thin wide necks, and wants to know if there are any on the Wolfgang guitars. They're not thin wide. They're going to be uh, on the USA-made ones, especially. Um, actually, on all of them, they're going to be an inch and five-eighths at the nut, which is going to be fender scale. Uh, and they are not going to be super thin, uh, but not very fat either. They're going to be very comfortable. It's going to fit right in here nicely. Um, but they are not wide thin like, say, a Paul Reed Smith could be or a Charvel could be. Uh, what else do we have? Are, are you losing your oh. voice? <laughs> yeah, I am. I don't know why, but I am. I was just... Well, he said he saw a leftover 2015 Emerald Green Metallic Kramer on the Sam Ash website today and fell in love. He may get he may get that instead of the Strat he was thinking about. Cool. Uh, what else we have here? Greg Walker says thoughts on Splawn. Oh, Splawn, great high gain amps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. RMG, Jack, uh, you want Jack to describe the sound of, of his Dumble amps? They're going to sound like a Dumble, right? Well, the, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to me, the, uh, the quintessential Dumble tone is Robin Ford. Just just dial it up on YouTube. I agree. Look for some Robin Ford live stuff uh, where you see he's got his, uh, it looks like an off-white or butterscotch kind of color. You'll see the head. He's got a 212 cabinet, and he's got a, a rack that has, I don't know, some power conditioners, delay, tuner, stuff like that in it. And, uh, does he have, does that, he have a dumbbellator in that too? Oh, yeah. Excuse me. It has a dumbbellator in it as well. Uh, the dumbbellator is an outboard effects loop. Rather than having it built into the amp, it's uh, actually built into a rack unit. So your amp feeds the dumbbellator. The dumbbellator feeds the, the, the rack unit, the delay or reverb, whatever. Then the signal goes back from the, the effect into the dumbbellator and then back into the amplifier. So it's a big loop. Instead of just going into a... Uh, an effects loop in the amp. Yeah, it's, it's an, an outboard effects loop, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Somebody wants to know something from Johnny uh, or Dave. Sinner. Sinner. Uh, 
whoever, what reverb delay pedal would you recommend for 80s metal? Reverb or delay pedal? Well, I, I don't recommend reverb. I'm not, Jack loves reverb. I'm not a fan of reverb. Uh, delay. <laughs> Uh, I would get the TC Electronics flashback delay, any version of it, the flashback times four, which is the one I use, the regular size flashback or the mini flashback. Um, mm -hmm. It's, you know, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the old TC Electronics 2290, which was a rack unit, uh, uh, um, delay unit that they, which is, in my opinion, the best delay ever, ever made. But, you know, it was a big rack unit and it, it broke very easily when banging it around. The chip of that unit is in all these pedals and it sounds, just the sound alone is, is the best, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, it, I mean, if, if you want, if you really want that true 80s metal sound, get something that, that they were using back in the day, you know. Get, like a PCM70. Get, get a... Uh, 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 Lexicon PCM70 or an SPX90 by Yamaha. Going to be it's going to be noisy, but Yamaha it's going to be that or, sound. Or I Ibanez. Ibanez. They were making pedals. Just look look at those old guitar. Was there Guitar World back then? Yeah, there was. Yeah, Guitar World, Guitar Player Magazine, and look at the ads for all the all the effects, mm -hmm. and you'll see the ones that that they were using back in the day that everybody had. Um, I mean, MXR was big. I don't know if MXR ever had a a, a reverb. I don't um, think they did back back then, at least. I think now they they do. But hmm. um, uh, RMG seven four uh, four seven one says, Jack, who was your biggest amp building there influence? Was a question about tubes before that. Well, well, you can answer that while I find it. All right. Well, as far as tubes go, I strictly stick with JJ uh, for a couple of reasons. They're basically reliable. I think they sound great. And uh, they're reasonably priced and easy to get. Mm -hmm. And um, to me, one tube or another, I couldn't care less. I don't care whether you're using the most expensive new old stock American tube or a Chinese tube. It's irrelevant because once the bass player and the drummer come in, who cares? I agree with you. I mean, I, I use JJ's all the time, either JJ's or TAD's. Yeah. Um, they're both, uh, and I've gotten them both from Jack. So um, JJ's usually are, are the uh, most reliable. They last the longest usually. Um, TADs sound really good. You know, they're, they're about the same, maybe a tiny bit more expensive, tiny bit, maybe a dollar more, maybe. But uh, the JJ's work. You know, what's interesting though, Greg, is that that's why they make that, uh, what is it, YM, your mileage may vary, YMMV, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. So you talk to another ramp builder, he's going to give you a different opinion completely. Um, biggest ramp building influence? Uh, Fender, Marshall, for sure. I mean, I've learned stuff from a lot of different uh, places, Vox. But all vintage stuff, you know, all handmade stuff, not the uh, PCB stuff. Blank Palette says, so Dave, if I put an overdrive pedal, will it give me more of a soap distortion and push with more sustain? Well, put put it into what? Did into I miss? What? Yeah. Hang on a second. Did I miss Bonham something? Is a big dumb yeah, Blocky D says Bonham Moss is a big Dumble Amp fan. Actually, right now he's a big uh, um, Tweed Amp fan, but he, I think he sold all of his Dumbles recently. Blank Palette. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Also, RMG Dumble is a big influence, but I've never seen one. I've only seen uh, photographs, but I've studied them. Okay, Blank Palette. So, uh, P all right, so you have a PV Amp. I mean, an overdrive pedal is always going to give you more sustain than, than what you have. Even if you have an amp with distortion in it, uh, an, an overdrive pedal will give you more distortion. Is, but is, also, remember, it's going to give you more noise. Uh, the more distortion you use, the, mo the more noise, the more feedback, the more uh, hiss, you're going to get, you're going to get noise. So uh, in my humble opinion, the least amount of distortion you can use 
and still sound good, the better you, the better it is all around. Um, it's just uh, it's it's probably the most pleasing to the ears. Uh, it may be a little more work on your fingers, but it'll make you a better guitar player. Jimmy Carr wants to know what rig I used in the when I played in the eighties. Uh, it could that that differed every week. Um, I've had uh, I've had rack units. I've had an ADA MP1 preamp. I've had uh, uh, basically in the eighties. I used rack units, but different preamps and different power amps, uh, different. Uh, Speaker configurations, I, I had uh, a couple of 212 cabinets, a couple of 412 cabinets. In the 80s, I, the, more, the more, more was always better in the 80s <laughs> with me. Especially. <laughs> I brought more gear. It, it was, it's ridiculous. I look back, and that's probably why I have a bad back now. So <laughs> pretty, if you, if you knew me in the 80s, you'd know what I'm going through today. RMG. That's a really deep question. But you gotta, you gotta read the question. <laughs> uh, it's further down. Oh, okay. This way no, or yeah, this yeah, way? Right here. What makes the Dumble such a highly regarded amplifier? Or is there something fundamentally different in the building wiring? Well, Dumble was a master tuner of amplifiers. Uh, he's a really smart guy, and he uh, the selection of the parts, whether they be uh, where they're placed in the circuit, the values that they are, uh, the wiring. Uh, you see his wiring, it's all very specific. It's certain wires cross, certain wires are parallel to each other. Um, there's, a ver there's many, many, many different aspects to a Dumble amplifier. And, you know, some people just blow it off and they say, eh, it's a modified twin reverb baloney, I say, to anybody who says that. But uh, very sophisticated, beautiful amp. The other, the other side to that uh, is he's not making any more amplifiers. He's not alive. He's very dead. And there oh. aren't that many. Dumble, isn't oh, he dead? No. Not that uh, old, well, he's not making any more amplifiers. Maybe he's not dead, but his... His businesses, uh, he's not making anymore, and there aren't that many out there. So it's uh, it's a supply and demand thing too. So not only you know is it an amazing build, but go find one. I dare you. Yeah. Thank you, Pete. Jake's a cool guy and a great guitar player. It's very funny. Uh, RMG says the Dumble sounds like the Howard Hughes of amplifiers. It kind of is. Pretty good, yeah. Also, uh, Larry Carlton uses Dumbles. Uh, Dumble make a champ unique for the specific player? Uh, yes and no. He tweaked them. But I don't think you could specifically say that the amp, uh, the circuit was designed for a certain player. I could be wrong, and maybe somebody who knows more about it might correct me. But I think it was more the basic circuit was there, but he could tweak it. You want a little bit more mid range or more treble, a little more sparkle, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. RMG, don't ever apologize for the questions. We love questions. Uh, so sorry for the questions. Just getting back to the tube amps. And I'm wildly interested talking to someone that knows what they're talking about. Okay, well, um, as long as there's a purchase at the end of all the talking, <laughs> we're okay with it. By the way, RMG, uh, if you want to do a lot of learning about Dumble stuff, go to the Amp Garage. Their website is completely dedicated to Dumbles and train wrecks. Hmm. Very cool. What's what's the other the other site? There's another site that's dedicated to amps. Gear page. Um, gear page. Uh, no. Met Metro. Metro Amp Forum. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's 
Yeah, like Paul cool. says, Jack, do you make custom wiring and sell them for customizing at home? I make custom wiring. I'm not exactly sure what you mean. Try and uh, tune me up on that a little bit, Blank. Oh, Blackie wants to see one of my amps. Uh, Blackie, we're not the, at the, the, house. the problem is we're in Jack's kitchen right now, and the shop is downstairs, and I'm not uh, – I'll fall down the stairs if I, if I try to walk down those stairs with my computer. So on Monday, I'll, we'll do a uh, we'll – um, I'll show my amplifiers. I've got, I've got several of Jack's amps at my house. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the ones that we. It's the ones that you normally see in my background, but I guess you'll you probably see the guitars more than you see the amps. So mm -hmm. I'll show them off on Monday. Yeah, you you should do some some uh, YouTube mobile live videos with those amps. <laughs> we'll set you up in a truck. Okay. We'll flip the side up, and there'll be Dave performing for us. Hang on, let's see if I have a photo. I'll show, I'll show a photo if I have. Black, you can also, uh, Black, Blackie, I'm sorry. You could also just go to the website. You won't see the high gain stuff, but all the clean stuff is there. Mm -hmm. And what, what's your website again? Rock and Roll Amps. Ja oh, that's my email address. It's Rock and Roll Amps. R-O-C-K-N-R-O-L-L-A-M-P-S dot com. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I'll put a link down in the in the description to your uh, to your website. Yeah, sure Thank you. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Real quick, I have a photo of. That's a fifty watt head called the Offender. That's a high gain head right there. Um, Joe Suma at uh, at Greenwich Music actually owns this amp at the moment. Um, and he loves it. I have the 100 watt version of this amp, which is called the RR100, the Rock and Roll 100. But um, well, actually, the Rock and Roll 100. This is the dirty. The dirty channel is this amp, and the clean channel is a Dumble. Dumble clean. So it's uh, that's just one of them. So let's see if what. Let's see what else I have. Hang on a second. Thank you, Blackie. You're right, Greg. Okay, this this here is the the hundred watt amp that I use that I have. That's just the head. It's called the RR one hundred. I'm gonna look and see on my. Uh, also, I have a. If you want to check it out on Facebook, Jack uh, also makes combo amps. Uh, he doesn't just make heads; he makes combo amps. You know, uh, twenty watt, forty watt, fifty watt, even sixty watt. You know, one twelve, two ten, four four ten, even if you want two uh, twelves. Uh, all kinds of stuff like that. I mean, this is. You see that. Now you gotta push glare. I'm gonna put it in closer. Here, let me see that closer. Yeah. Let's get this like this. I have that. Oh, you don't have that set. I do. Yeah. Let me just. Hey. Okay. Well set. Okay. Now you got to find the picture again. I think it's preview to edit. What's that? All right. Calm down. It's coming. Oh, there, there it, is. it is. And there's Dave's guitar. Come on, you. Why won't it open? I don't know. Something all right. That amplifier right there, that's 212s. 50 watts. 50 watts. What is that, a Reverb Deluxe? Yeah. That's called a Reverb Deluxe, which is... Basically, if you know anything about Fender amps, that's that's an equivalent of um, a Fender Vibrolux reverb type amplifier with a lot of modifications. Yep. Uh, RMG says, 
No. Oh, whoa. Uh, Blank Pellet says custom wiring harnesses to replace the wiring inside of an amp. Uh, oh, inside an amp. Uh, no, but I do have a, um, a product where, like, I rewire uh, deluxe reverb reissues, super reverb reissue, twin reverb re reissue, blah, blah, blah. Say it fast. Anyway, um, yeah, I rewire the reissues and make them hand wired amplifiers. They've seen this? I've seen that a few no. times. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they've all seen that. Uh, RMG, Jack mentioned train wreck amps. Was Dumble involved with those? What's their claim to fame? I think Brad Paisley plays one. Jack mentioned train wreck. Uh, was designed by uh, Ken Fisher, who passed away a few years ago. That's who I was thinking. It's right. not Dumble, Ken Fisher. Also, a, uh, I never knew the guy, but supposedly people talk about him very fondly. He's supposed to be a really smart guy and a very nice guy, sharing with information and stuff like that. And he built the train wreck, which is inside. It's not a really, really technical amp, but... It's amazing. <laughs> and if you don't build it just the way he did, it doesn't sound the same, just like a Dumble. You have to adhere to their rules. If you don't, you'll have an amp that sounds good, but it doesn't sound like that. Blackie DH says rock and roll amps. He's checking it out. Okay. Cool. 43 people watching us at the moment, 28 thumbs ups. We appreciate all the thumbs ups, guys and girls. Mm hmm Oh, yeah. You, you know how Dave loves those thumbs-ups. <laughs> and also, to let you guys know, uh, on certain Fridays when our friends over at Tone Talk go live, we end the feed and send everybody over there. They're going live in about 15 minutes. So in about 15 minutes, go over to tone-talk.com with... Uh, David Friedman, Mark Hazansky. Uh, they'll have Pete Thorne and George Pahone, who I just uh, added, on, added on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's a good friend of a friend. So another one of, uh, another one of the, the amps that Jack builds, which is pretty interesting, is this. And you can get this in a head or combo as well. It's called the Quad Six. Jack can tell you a, a little bit about what that is. It's 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 different than your normal Fender style amplifier. So just hang on a second. Well, it's uh, very much a uh, it's similar to a basement plexi style. However, there are changes, and this amp particularly is four six v sixes. It'll run eighteen watts cathode bias, twenty two watts. Fixed bias, and with the flip of a switch, you can go to 40 watts using both bias systems together, which is uh, my contribution to the amp world, which I don't think anybody builds one like that. And it took a while for me to figure it out, but I accomplished it, and the amp is really cool, if I do say so myself. Yeah, it does sound great. It's got its own thing going. When you run, you know, some people like cathode bias. It's got a certain feel to it, and other people like fixed bias because it notes more kind of spit out at you but uh when you run the two biases together it's unique very it's very cool and, and again it's it's like a uh like a tweed is it's a, a tweed, tweed basement, basement thing and and, and it's plexi. got a like a plexi thing all at the same time single input blendable channels Mm -hmm. uh, Dennis, my roommate, uses one of those. He has one of those. It sounds great. Uh, Showman Blues. Your favorite of your amps. Oh, that's a tough one, Showman. <laughs> um, well, I'm going to answer that for you because uh, basically when Jack plays, he plays with two amps. He plays in stereo, and it's usually two reverb deluxes, but I, you know, I think whatever is set up, but normally I see him playing two, through two reverb deluxe amps. But these days, you know, I could migrate over to like the deluxe, mm -hmm. 
which is also something that I kind of, you know, people. It's your take. It's just it's your 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 design. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people, you know, like for instance, uh, Fender reverb amps, and they shy away from the same amp name without reverb. For instance, Deluxe, Deluxe Reverb. The Deluxe, while it's a cool little amp, it's kind of anemic when you put it next to a Deluxe Reverb, and that's because there's at least three gain stages that this clean signal passes through um, in a Deluxe Reverb, or a Pro Reverb, or a Vibrolux Reverb, or a uh, Dual Showman Reverb, etc., etc. Uh, so you have three gain stages. So the trick was to get an amp that would work and sound like a blackface amp without the reverb and without vibrato, because nobody uses it anyway. Most people use reverb in their pedals, and they usually have very cool vibrato pedals, or tremolo pedals. So uh, anyway, the Deluxe is as powerful and clean as a reverb amp with a reverb shutoff as opposed to a non-reverb amp like a Fender Deluxe or a Pro or a, I don't know, what else? A twin. A twin without reverb. Is there such a thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've seen it. Blank Palette uh, asks, what does a Plexi sound like? Because if you hear it over the computer, it ain't even close to the real sound. Uh, what songs definitely have a plexi sound? Well, before I answer that question, I'm going to say, first of all, with a plexi, they are they are not easy amps to play. You, uh, the better fingers, the better contact your fingers have with strings, the better you're, you're going to sound on a plexi. It's a very unforgiving sound. They're not as overdriven as you think they are. They're very clean. Um, you know, a guy like Eddie Van Halen can play through a plexi, and it's going to sound like Eddie Van Halen, like the first four records. And then you can plug someone in that's not Eddie Van Halen, and it's going to be you're going to think the amplifier broke. And it's not the case. It's it's you know it's a very unforgiving amplifier. My uh, what my ears hear when I uh, when I think of a good sounding plexi. Listen to All Right Now from Free. Listen to um, ACDC. Any ACDC sa- any, you know, record. Blasting that's, a, that's a great plexi sound. So uh, that's basically what plexis sound like. Uh, and and if, you're, if you you know, think it sounds like a Van Halen record, it only sounds that way for two reasons. Because he's using a variac, which lowers the voltage, which makes the tubes work harder. Uh, which gives you a little bit more gain, and it's Eddie's fingers. Without that combination, you're not going to get a plexi to sound like Eddie's amp. And as far as a plexi sound, a lot of people make the mistake of buying, excuse me, 50 or 100 watt uh, plexi style amplifiers. They sit down in their basement or in their den or in their bedroom, and you can't understand why you can't get the amp to crank. Not going to happen. The plexi is an amp that really needs to be in a theater. You need to crank it. That thing needs to be dimed. Yeah, all, all, all of the them. middle base, just Everything. dime it, jump of the channels, and uh, you need to have a room that's large to absorb, I call it the nastiness, so that by the time that sound reaches your ears, it's like, wow, this is heaven. Marshall, you know, plexi style heaven. I agree. Uh, that's uh, you know that's a, a misconception that that most people have. You know, I want I want a plexi. I want a plexi, and then they get it and they're like, "It this thing sucks." Right. You know that's because you're not using it correctly, and it's unusable in a house. You can't use one in a small club. You know, and if you're gonna play through a plexi in a bar, you're gonna get kicked out. You're just gonna get kicked out. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, I'm not a physicist. I'm sorry, go. Oh, well, that, that's why Edward Van Halen had his turned all the way up in the clubs. Also, well, he's Edward Van Halen who's going to tell him to turn down, not me. Right. Uh, Showman Blues, uh, Jack, your model is your model for bedroom players. Uh, it, you know, I'm going to answer that for him, and he can answer it as well, because not only do I gig, but I'm also a bedroom player. Uh Yes, it is because they most of Jack's amps are a clean pat- platform. 
And if you have a good sounding overdrive pedal that sounds good at low volumes, it's a great bedroom amp. Can you add to that? Uh, well, you know, it's all about moving air. So uh, I would say stay away from 8-inch and 10-inch speakers in general. 12s are really where it's at. Uh, what else? Uh, you got to learn to use your tone controls. Very simple thought. Uh, but a lot of people forget about that. And the louder you are, the less effective your tone controls become. And um, at bedroom levels, you want to use your treble, middle, and bass, and presence for that matter. But as you get louder, you definitely got to jack down that bass uh, to keep your amp clean and just to, you know, add your treble and uh, mids to go, you know, whatever your ear tells you. And don't play to your knees. You play to your knees, all you're going to do is kill your audience, and you're going to be going, oh, I can't figure out why my amp doesn't have any treble. Well, the audience is hearing it. You're not. Mm -hmm. yeah. Also, if, you, if you've heard any, I don't know if, if you've heard me playing in my living room at all, but uh, I use Jack's amps in my living room uh, at my house, and, I mean, it's a little bit, letter, a little bit louder than bedroom volume, but I, I get away with it, you know, no one, no one complains, so there, it's not bad. It's not bad for a house. If, if you're just a house player but want a really good amplifier, you can get away with using one of Jack's amps. Yeah. I mean, I, I play my amps. I could use a 50-watt amp at 4 o'clock in the morning with a little overdrive, and I go downstairs and have myself a blast. It doesn't have to be loud. I don't think there's a... You know, it doesn't necessarily mean you don't have to be loud. They all it sounds good. You have a good amp, good overdrive. Doesn't matter what volume you're at. You'll be happier when it's loud. Agreed. But you know, if you feel like noodling in the middle of the night. Well, Showman Blues looks like you uh, looks like you have a space where you can crank it up a little. So you should be able to. You know, why don't you get in, get in touch with Jack? Um, I'm pretty sure over the speaker. <laughs> well, uh, you know what we can do is we can leave his uh, we can leave his uh, his um, website address down on the bottom of this ch uh, of this video, and you can check it out and contact him. I meant without the whining sound. I think we got to back up to that. Who? Uh, Blank palettes. I don't know. Let's see. Hang on. He's saying without the whiny sound, whereas it looked like he said whiny sound. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, be, uh, okay. Is it a bedroom? Uh, is it for bedroom players without the whiny sound? Yes. Then it's also the most important part. Other people may argue this, but if you were to uh, take a pie chart, and cut the pie up and address the different slices of the pie as to the most important parts between the person and the sound coming out of their amplifier. Me, and I would defend this wholeheartedly, the speaker makes or breaks your sound. So I would give the speaker 50% of the pie and then anything else that makes up the signal chain, including the human being playing, that's all part of little slices inside the, that other 50%. But the speaker is the piece that when you sit down in a store and um, you grab a guitar off the shelf and you want to try out an amp, if the people who designed that amplifier haven't picked out a speaker that pleases the most people, they're not going to sell that amplifier. So it's all about the speaker. Hey Johnny, on, a, on another note, I'm looking at your Wolfgang right this minute, and because of the the uh, your your windowsill, it's reflecting. It looks like you have white stripes on that black body. It looks like it's striped up. It's very funny. What? Oh <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Your th that guitar that that's a very very high gloss guitar. 
Extremely. Yeah, what you're actually looking at, you're actually looking yeah, at a chair. Fine. You're looking at this chair right here. Oh, yeah, maybe that, that is that, it. Yeah. That's the chair <laughs> and, the, and the pillow on the chair is, so is, funny. is going across. Yeah. Although it that looks is, like it's right on that guitar. That's a cool graphic. Of, you've got that like is a cool graphic. Chairs and, and, and seats. I had no idea it was a chair. You guys like seats? <laughs> Thanks for the comment, Showman, about the website. And it's easy to navigate because I build my own website. They so make it easy, I think. Oh, anyway. cool. And so you probably have a Facebook, too. A yes. public uh, for Rock and roll your... I'm saying on Facebook. Cool, cool. Post a lot of stuff, and plus I'm a member of a lot of AMP-related groups, hmm. which uh, some some of them it's an honor to be in because there's some really amazing techs in there, which I look up to like like gods, you know, like looking up to a guitar god. These guys are just amazing, and it's like it's like a brotherhood, hmm. and we do a lot of laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Do a lot of laughing. Yeah. Oh, that's what's so great ab about about the internet, you know, and all this stuff. I mean, look at this. We're on opposite ends of of the country right now, and we're we're laughing a little bit. That's pretty cool. <laughs> pretty <amazing. laughs> yeah. Hey, Howie. My my dog oh, Howie is here. What? Oh no, yeah. he's leaving. No, no, have him come in. Howie. Jack has. Jack loves dogs. We have a dog here too. Where's Dylan? Dylan, Dylan's sleeping right here. Oh, he's sleeping. What happened to the sound? He turned it off for a second. Oh. Yeah, I turned it off, so I'm not yelling. Come here. He's 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 uh. It, it's it's almost time for his W. Uh oh. If you know what I mean. So he's he's right here. Howie, come here. <laughs> Blank talent. If you can damage the magnet on a speaker while playing, that would be very special. You can damage just about everything else, but the magnet, no way. Not from playing. You'll damage it by dropping it out your window, but uh, definitely not from playing. Not the cone. I'm sorry, not the magnet. How he doesn't want to. No, he, he went back in there. <laughs> A chicken stealing dog, Johnny. Huh? huh? Sean, I hope he's not a chicken stealing dog. Chicken stealing dog. We'll, no. show you, we'll show no. you what Dylan looks like. Hang on a second. Oh, I was close. Oh, look out. You're, you're wearing pants, right? Yes, I am. <laughs> that's, that's Dylan right down there. Hey, Dylan. Hey, buddy, say hello. Over there. Look. Over there. Smile for the camera. He's a good boy. Very good boy. Dylan. Half a, half a pit bull. And half of something else. Yeah. yeah. What do you call that? Bre Brendel, isn't it? Yeah, Brendel. Yeah, Brendel. Brendel Paul. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, my, my, my sister and, and the, her boyfriend. This was back in the 90s. They had a dog that looked a lot like, a lot like that one. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. Until I got him, I didn't even know what Brindle was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now it's called my vocabulary. <laughs> yeah, he's what a great dog. Mm -hmm. Yes, pit bulls get a bad rap. This dog is so gentle, it's unbelievable. He's scared of his own shadow. <laughs> He's loving me right now. He loves his daily. <laughs> <He's great. laughs> what else we have? Uh, we about there? We're close. Yeah. We're close, everybody. Uh, our friends over at Tone Talk, they should be going live uh, probably any moment. Maybe they're live now. I don't know. Um, We'd like to send you guys over there to check them out. They're with uh, Pete Thorne and George Pahone. I love the, Pete Thorne. From, from the Black Eyed Peas. Who doesn't, yeah, who doesn't love Pete Thorne? Great player. He um, makes great videos. 
Mm -hmm. Great demos. Every mm -hmm. one of them is like a work of art. Mm -hmm. Baseline, yeah. drumming. Yeah, he's, he's one of the best guitar players on the planet right now. Yeah. So when we're done here, we uh, suggest you all go over there. Um, although, let, let, let me know, actually. Let me know in the chat room if they do go live and, and I don't see it. Um, let me know. Um, Blank Palette 2 said he had a girlfriend named Brindle. Brindle. Or was it Brenda? Hmm. <laughs> so Brendel, it, it that's that's is, that's the color. That's the color combination. Is that what that is, Brendel? Yeah, that's how they describe it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're definitely not ready. They're not. They're not up yet. At Tone Talk, they're not there yet. <laughs> no, we're still. We're not good yet. <laughs> 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 it's okay. I just have to get home soon, but that's all right. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's dark there now, huh? Well, yeah, I, I can I mean, see. I can see and everything. It's fine. You just, you just have to go home. Well, eventually. You know, I'm sure Jack wants to, you know, get into his, you know, shorts and, <laughs> and cuddle with his wife. It's time for my cocktail. Yeah. Like I was saying before we started, you can only... I can only take so much, Dave. You know. I don't know. Where can you take me? <laughs> I'll take you to Moe's. All right, I like Moe's. <laughs> Maybe I'll go there tomorrow. <laughs> Can't talk about food, Jacks on a diet. True. Yeah. Oh, same here. I told you all. I've all I've eaten today was a bowl of cereal. That's it. I'm kind of on a diet too. Combs are the cleanest and high gain. Well, that's a tough question because uh, I learned recently that uh, all speakers distort. Oh yeah. I mean, that sounds silly to say, but when you think you're hearing clean, they're actually distorting and producing all kinds of harmonics and. All kinds of craziness. I mean, not an expert on it. And this is just a very quick summation of listening to an expert speak about it. I think it was a guy from Eminence who explained this. Mm -hmm. And uh, but anyway, for high gain, I know that the the high gainers love uh, vintage thirties. They love um, G12H. They love G12M. They love G12M sixty fives. Not to be confused with G twelve sixty fives. What else? What's some of the other and uh, like Celestian style speakers? And there's some other uh, builders. Um, I, Celestians in general. I love I love the seventy fives that that come in a regular A and B cabinet. Yeah, I know. A lot of people put their nose up at the G twelve T seventy five, and quite frankly, I think it's a great sounding speaker, especially at high gain. And quite often, I used to play a prank on a lot of uh, my customers who would thumb their nose at the G twelve T seventy five. So when they'd come over to pick up their amp. I'd have it pumped through on uh, one side of my Marshall cabinets, which I have them wired. I have two G1265s on one side and two G12T75s on the other side. And I would have their amp going through the 75s. And while I was handing the guy a handkerchief to clean the drool hanging off the side of his lip because he couldn't get enough of the tone, he says, wow, what speakers are those? And I said, well, those are the ones that last week you said sucked. G12T75s. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, usually, most people say I'm upgrading my speakers, meaning I'm getting away from the G12T75s unless, like, there's something wrong with them. But each his own. That's why they make many different kinds of speakers. Mm -hmm. RMG471 says, please thank Jack for answering the questions and dealing with a guy who hasn't played a tube amp in a decade. Really appreciate the answers and him being on the show. You're very welcome. And RMG, do you ever see that uh, meme? It's a picture of Batman smacking Robin in the head and going, get a tube amp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Tube amps are great. 
blank palette. I'm also gonna I'm gonna throw this up in the air too. Eminence makes Neo speakers now. Well, oh, I guess yeah. they've been making them for they a while. Did. The uh, the Neo Dimium speakers, and they're called. It's called the American version is the Little Texas, and the pseudo uh, um, British sounding speaker is called the Tonker Light. Uh, both sound amazing. They're not terribly expensive, and they'll make your amplifier lighter than it is with whatever speakers you have in it right now. A single 12 will cut 5 pounds, 10 pounds for a pair, which is a lot of weight for a combo. And, you know, even me, I used to think, oh, look at that little tiny magnet. That speaker couldn't possibly sound they good. Sound, they sound amazing. They sound they amazing. They sound amazing. Uh, I'm in the middle of switching over all my 12s and all my amps to these Neo speakers. I'm a fan of the American sound, so I, I, I would uh, probably get the little Texas in my amplifiers. Uh, but if you like the sound of a British speaker, go with the Tonker Light. Um, both sound great. You're welcome, John. Mm -hmm. And Blank Palette, if I didn't say so before. Yes, everybody. Okay, it looks like Tone Talk. They're they're going live shortly. Uh, well, so um, I mean, we can we can hang. It's fine. Mm -hmm. But uh, once we're done, I encourage everybody to go everybody to go over there. Tone talkcom That's our friends uh, Mark Hazansky, David Friedman, and they have uh, Pete Thorne and George Pahone from Black Eyed Peas. Well, that's one of the bands he's in. Pete Thorne has been the source of, uh, I think I must have bought at least two dozen pedals because I watched his videos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you wonder, it's like, well, geez, these pedals are, you know, they're okay. It's his hands. <laughs> Pete Thorne's hands are golden. They're like platinum, his hands. Uh, John Constantine, yes, I do have some amazing friends. Uh, and thank you for the compliment. All my friends, including Johnny Bean, they're all amazing. <laughs> and and I consider all you guys and girls my friends too. So you can consider yourself all amazing as well. Yeah. And leave a thumbs up. <laughs> um, yeah, we're, we're all friends. Thanks for welcoming me tonight, people. And we'll have Jack back again. We'll, you know, we, this was just, you know, uh, a brief moment in time. Yeah, uh, he, he comes over today to have his guitar fixed and says, hey, how'd you like to be on this uh, show we do tonight? And I'm like, what do I say? <laughs> You're like, where's my tux? <laughs> <laughs> did I shave? Nah, I didn't shave either. I did. You're welcome, Bill. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. It's great to meet you, man. And and I, I mean, I, like I said, I've heard a lot about you and your amps for a long time through through Nesdal, and it's great to finally uh, put a, a face to the uh, to the sound. If that makes any kind of it does make any kind of you can you know you can send your fifty one fifty over him too, so he can you know retube that for you as well. There's some great techs in California. <laughs> Believe me. Well, I think I think Dave is offering the, the shipping. So. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I think he'll want to play through it. He won't send. That's the problem is he won't send it back. No, the, no. It's, if, if he, believe me, I'll send it back. In you fact, do your you do your magic to it. I'll never see it again. <laughs> Dave will be like, says it's oh, great to hear it. all your knowledge, Jack. You're very welcome, Desiree. Yes. 82 Blues, thank you. It says, great chat tonight. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. I See, used to go to a restaurant called Familia. Mm -hmm. Is that Familia. how you pronounce it? Familia. Familia. You're not very familiar with me. It's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be Italian, though, what that means. Oh, I, you I out. know it means family, right? <laughs> I mean, you don't got to be a rocket science to figure that one out. Just an amp scientist. An amp scientist. Yeah. <clears throat> Some talk live tonight. Should Desiree wants to meet you in person one day, Jack. You Desiree, you would love you would love Jack's wife, Jody. She's amazing. She's what, she a, sure what a great lady. 
and uh, you'll, you'll meet those way maybe next week. He said someday, but I think he means Friday. <laughs> Desiree is my girlfriend. Did you meet her? No. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. Did you? Well, not this one. <laughs> did, uh, did you? Were, you the the, one. were you at the guitar show? Yes. Yes. Then you did meet. That's where I yes. met her. Yeah. I yeah. met you. See, Desiree. <laughs> you met the last three. Shush. <laughs> you know, I really wish this was 3D. Really. Uh, come on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, so, Desiree, uh, that's right. We, when we went to that amp booth, Jack went with us. The amp booth at the last uh, guitar show in, in Freeport. So, Johnny, do you play in a band? Thanks yeah. Well, <laughs> I've, played, I've played in a lot of bands. I've done a lot of touring, a lot of, you know, all of, you know, everything. Um, He's retired. But, no, I'm not. Oh, well, that's um, the other day. Sorry. That's, I'm not retired. I'm, lo I'm long from retired. Um, oh, yeah. Wasn't, didn't you want to talk about some sort of retirement tonight or not? <laughs> Yeah, I did, but no, I mean, no, 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 no. It's you know. <laughs> if you can, if you can prove it, I probably I still, I, I probably still, it. I probably still wouldn't want to talk about that. Yeah, no. Let's all right. Leave. Tone talk is live right now. Everybody, right. leave a thumbs up if you, if you appreciate this stuff. Great to meet you. Same here. Thank you. Thank you all. Yeah. Great to meet you too, Johnny. Oh, you're welcome. Is that right? Is that what you say? No. <laughs> if someone says, great to meet you. Oh, you're no. welcome. <laughs> no. Oh, all right, everybody. Is, Tone Talk is live. Yes, I know. Everybody, go over to tone-talk.com right now. Everybody, and in the chat room, say that Johnny Bean sent me. Okay? If you go over there, say Johnny Bean sent me. And uh, tell him I said hello. So, actually, I'll meet you guys over there. So uh, go over there, tone-talk.com. Pete Thorne, George Pahone, Mark Kazansky, and David Friedman. All right. Great to see you guys. And don't hang up. We'll say our, our goodbyes. So everybody have a great weekend. And maybe we'll see you. We'll see you soon. All hey. right. Good night, everybody. See you guys later. Rock and roll amps. Check them out. All right. Johnny Bean, Good night.